Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about our Megasquirt 3 specific firmware and our fuel settings. So when we're working with a Megasquirt 3 box, whether it's going to be a Megasquirt 3 uh, Pro or an Evo or a plug and play box from DIY Autotune that might be built on the Megasquirt 3 uh, software and firmware, we're going to be finding we have a lot more things that we have to program and work with in our Tuner Studio software. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at our fuel specific settings that we have to go through that are going to be much different than our Megasquirt 2 firmware. Um, we're going to be finding that our injector data is going to be different. We're going to be finding even our closed loop O2 control is going to be different. We have stage injection. We have our injection timing that's going to be different. We have larger VE tables. We have more breakpoints to deal with. We also have uh, more sophisticated uh, control for our fuel pump. If we're using a modern car such as a Ford that has a uh, pulse width modulated fuel pump controller to drive the fuel pump, we're going to be finding all of that's going to be available to program in this Megasquirt 3 firmware. It's much different than our Megasquirt 2. So let's jump into the video so we can check out the differences and we can learn all about our Megasquirt 3 firmware. Okay, so let's get started here. We're going to be taking a look at working with our Megasquirt 3 firmware and how it's going to be relating to our fuel settings in our Tuner Studio software. So let's jump in here and take a look at our injector dead time. We're going to be going down through all of these tables here and uh, looking at the differences or any other information that we need to know um, that hasn't been covered already with our Megasquirt 2 or Microsquirt firmware in the previous training videos. Let's jump up here to Injector Dead Time to begin. Now when we open this up it looks quite different than the dead time information we had to enter or work with with our Megasquirt 2 or our Microsquirt firmware. So starting off the top here we see injector parameters and we can find a little box here that says same or individual. So if we use same here, it's going to be just using one fixed injector dead time curve. And this is going to be typical for most all situations. Um, we see that we have uh, three other available or four in total injector dead time curves that we can use here. But under most circumstances, we're going to have the same injectors installed on all the cylinders. So we're going to have the same dead time value that's going to be associated with that. So if we go here and leave it in same, we're going to find we have to populate our dead time value just as we normally would it. 13.2 volt, and then this curve here is going to be associated with working with our injector dead time. So that's going to be the curve versus voltage. And if we click here on the upper right hand corner, we're going to be able to populate voltage versus the percentage compensation. Now, if we go ahead and uh, go set this to individual, we're going to find immediately it starts to populate here and open up, and uh, we're able to program different curves based on um, different injector outputs. Now, the situation this is going to be probably the most uh, relevant and most useful is going to be on a staged injection car. So if you have a four cylinder, let's say for example, that has uh, a thousand cc on the primary injectors, and then we have staged injection, we have another set of injectors, we might have 2200s on the secondary set of injectors. We would need to characterize two different voltage curves or two different dead time latency curves because the injectors are going to be uh, completely different. They're going to have completely different response times um, and they're going to need to be populated differently. So um, injectors A, B, C, and D are going to be used um, and set to the same dead time. So we would simply go here, we just copy and paste between all of these just like this basic. And then injectors E, F, G, or H, which would be, again, cylinder injectors 5, 6, 7, and 8, would be set on their own dead time value. We'd have to populate it. And then we would choose, let's say, curve 2 for the rest of the injectors here, just like this. So pretty straightforward how that's going to work. And then we would populate our injector dead time curves here um, for our primary injectors. 